Hello everyone, welcome back to Popcorn in Bed. Thank you as always for being here. I'm Cassie and I get to watch movies with you in my bed. So I'm excited to be here tonight. I am watching a movie in honor of Remembrance Day slash Veterans Day. If you are new here, I grew up in Canada, but I live in the States now. And in Canada, November 11th was Remembrance Day for us and we wore poppies. And I think it's the same in the UK and maybe all of Europe actually but there was a Canadian lieutenant, I believe, sergeant, John McRae, he wrote in Flanders Field, and it's about poppies, and that's one of the reasons we wear the poppy. I'm watching two movies in honor of November 11th, and the first one was My Choice. It came second in the poll last year for Veterans Day, and that is Courage Under Fire. This has been one I've been wanting to watch for a while, and it's got Denzel Washington and Mary Meg Ryan, which seems like a fantastic duo. I've loved them both in everything I've seen them in, so I am excited for this. Okay, let's get started. Courage Under Fire. Clearly I've never been there, but it feels like we're in the center of hell. I didn't know Matt Damon was in this too. In 28 countries with forces in the Gulf area have exhausted Gulf. all reasonable efforts. Gulf War. Have no choice but to drive Saddam from Kuwait by force. Iraq must withdraw from Kuwait completely. I have therefore directed to use all forces available to eject the Iraqi army from Kuwait. So this is in the 90s, right? The Gulf War. Let's get together, have a little prayer. Dear God, protect us as we protect our country we so dearly love. Keep us safe that we'll all get home to see our families and our children. Amen. Let's kill them all. Wow. Is that right, Boiler? Hell yeah. See you in Baghdad. He's so commanding, Denzel. Oh, wow. Tanks. Gunner ready to give old Saddam Insane a whole new way to hurt. <gasps> it's Sean Astin, too. I have his autograph right up there. Someone sent it to me. <sighs> On one hand, it seems like being in a tank would be awesome because you would feel protected because you are in a solid piece of equipment. On the other hand, if something went wrong, it would feel like you were trapped. Right, baby. Hold on, son. They got no range. Contact! Sir, he's in range! Come on, let me kill his ass! Fire! On the way! Calm down, calm down, son. Find me another target. Ah! Uh... Your pursuit should intercept their retreat. Grid 7, 6, 5, after. <gasps> get in, get in, get in! Oh, so much death. Come on, come on! Cap! Cap that Wait, so all those people were surrendering? What does that mean? Where the hell did that come from? Hell, it's shooting at us! Is that one of our tanks? Hard to make out, sir! Well, make it out! Patellan is Kruger 6, enemy tangos at phase line delta, enemy tanks! Oh my gosh, this is intense. They're firing at us! Load! Fire! 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 I gave the order to fire. You couldn't tell the difference between the T-54 and the Abrams. I believe that uh, we, that I, should have known the difference even with the night scope. Now, if we were under attack... Uh, but under the circumstances, there was no way to tell the difference. They fired at... Under the circumstances, I suppose that there was no way to tell the difference. Thank you, Colonel. <sighs> Oh, the 
That is so heartbreaking. You okay? Can I get you something? Yes, I'm fine. Fine. Colonel Sully. Yes. Washington Post. Oh no. Thank you very much, Mr. Gardner, but I have nothing to say. Tom Boylar, our bathroom. He... His parents have written to me. They're hearing rumors. We got an investigation running, Dad. You know we can't discuss it. You have. Yes, sir. But with all due parents, he died in action. He's a hero. That's all they want to know. <sighs> Colonel, the war is over. In other words, we've been passed over. I prefer to think of it as a second chance, Ned. We're considering the Medal of Honor for this chopper pilot who saved a bunch of guys on a down black hole. We got the rescued soldiers in there for debriefing. So the war is over now. Doug Bruno, White House, do everything my way, and we'll get along fine. Uh-huh. Iraqi ground troops on the ridge above, kept them completely pinned down. Did any of you discuss surrendering? Yes, sir. We weren't trained for that kind of situation, sir. I have to make excuses to me, soldier. That's about all we've got so far, sir. OK. As if things weren't bad enough already. I like his accent. Incoming! Get down! So we figure that's it. We're dead, but then we hear it. It's nothing like the sound of an inbound Huey. When the Huey comes back, it returns fire. And the ground troops, they go for cover. That's when they threw something overboard. Tank blue. Ah! We, uh, we never did see what knocked the Huey down. We couldn't see the crash. Any communications between you and them? No, sir. As I said, our radio was wasted. They start to close in on the Huey. We figure it's all over. And that's when we hear the sound of the rescue team. <laughs> <laughs> Load our wounded aboard. And that's when somebody decided to leave the dead. And this this Huey crew, they uh, they returned fire all through the final rescue. I heard it. Nothing else sounds like an M16. I heard it too. I don't know if it was Captain Walden, sir, but that Huey that saved our lives. It was a medic helicopter. Uh, if Captain Walden wins this medal, uh, you don't win it. You uh, you receive it. These uh, in nuances out of your head. I just want to get it straight from you. It's a woman. You didn't know? This is Captain Karen Emma Walden. Hey, Ryan. I mean, this is gold. It's Stop gold. Stop for optics, Unfortunately, guy. it's posthumous, but I've got her little daughter. I've got the president of the United States. Wait, she died. There is not going to be a dry eye from Nashua to Sacramento. Excuse us. Kale's five to one. <laughs> Husha. Alien. Look at his babies. <laughs> Mashed potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> They're so cute. Who's calling, please? Remember home phones? Those were kind of fun. When I was a kid, I loved answering the phone. Oh. Where are you going? Fort Hood. General Hirschberg's got me investigating a Medal of Honor. This has got to be the hardest part. He's probably you so to today? happy to be home. It's all right, isn't it, Nat? Fine. A couple of days. Then why are you emptying your sock drawer? I may be gone more than a couple of days. I don't know what's happening here. Everything's fine. I'm handling it. It would be so hard to be that wife, too. Mr. Rady, you were a Captain Walden's co-pilot. Can you tell me what you remember about Alcofan? I remember the Earth. I remember Alario's face. She hadn't needed to be a hero. Hey, that's so not fair. We were just doing our job. It's not Ren's fault I got hit. I mean, she sure as hell saved the lives of those guys on the Blackhawk. You always defend her. Why didn't you like her? She was so butch. Honey, shut up. <laughs> she gave her life for those men. She was a soldier. This is where they go down. Call for support get the fuck out of here! After we slow down that tank, walk far! Unhook the off-field ladder, port side! Push it overboard! What the fuck? Do it! Oh, she's... she's innovative. Three days later on a hospital ship. I nearly bought it, that's sure. 
<sighs> I'm used to seeing Meg Ryan as Kathleen Kelly or... Once upon a time, I was humping in the Delta. You guys kicked some serious butt over there. Hey, uh, one for my friend. Going that soon. Tony Gardner, Washington Post. Oh. Look, I went to Virginia and spoke with Mr. and Mrs. Boylar. How could you do that? Sorry, but they got a right to know what happened to their son. He's so familiar. Oh, he's got some demons. Oh. oh, this hurts my heart. Is there something like fishy about this investigation, about this story, or are they just being thorough, right? I'm running an inquiry on the recommendation to award the Medal of Honor to Captain Karen Walden. Rotero. Hey, yeah. Can you cover for me? I'm gonna uh, go feed the cancer genes. He's so young. He's so skinny. Uh, what do you want to know? How long were you with Captain Wald? Um, over over two years. I don't fly anymore though. No, you don't miss it, do you? Never. It's quite a habit you got there. It's one of the uh, few things I can call my own. <laughs> Tell me what happened at Alcafon. So hard for them to talk about. I'd never been in uh, in combat. Did someone die right there? The the other driver? No, he's the one that lost his legs. We gotta get him out of here. Okay. Perimeter. We're ripping apart the helicopter to make a perimeter? I need a, I need a hook. As soon as it gets dark, we dig in. Then we wait. For what? For the good guys. You won't think it's so funny when I nail your Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, they were laughing. So tell me what happened during the night. You saw the nights. Black. Just, just black. Tell me what happened that night. You think our guys will come tonight? They'll be here. I suggest that everybody... Holy freak! They got real close. Ah! It was just a probe. Alario! Altamar! My ear! Small phrase! Uh, I took one. Righty? Hanging in. How about you, Cap? Uh, stay with Righty. I like to come here. These kids. Folks used to have this place out on Palaveras Lake. I still go out there sometimes, watch them die. They do the damnedest things, you know? They never they never think about the consequences. Ima imagine that. Imagine going through life without thinking about the consequences. She got hit. After the attack, during the night. We waited. I mean, I, I, I still don't, I don't. Go on with what happened. Is it Both because Karen, it? Uh, the captain uh, was hurt pretty bad. Oh, fire a couple rounds off. Let him know we're still alive and kicking. During the course of the incident, did she display any doubt, any fear when she had to make these life and death decisions? No, never. The captain, she had this quality. The heavier the pressure, the calmer she got. We knew they were out there and sneaking up on us. I don't know why people think only good things happen when the sun comes up. Oh, gosh. Get in the hole. A hundred, maybe more. Phew, I thought they were gonna shoot at them. Do they know they're there though? They don't have a radio. Come on, let's move! Come back for me with a stretcher! Oh! She is intense. Just like that? Just like that? Well, I sincerely hope so. <gasps> I don't want to tell that story again. Not one more time. Abby, excuse? Yes, you can. Well, one more thing I'm confused about, though. This, this M16, did it run out of ammo? Ah, uh, what'd I say? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. That's why I'm asking. 
I guess, uh, I guess it ran out of ammo sometime during the morning. Black Hawk crew said that they heard M16 fire that morning. Did they? Uh, I must have been wrong then. <laughs> them or you? Them or you? Oh, them, them, yeah, no. Okay. I'm just kind of confused. What about the letter? You and Walden traded letters. Sent home in case anything happened to you? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So who was hers to? Her folks. So you sent them? Yeah. Folks, I mean, they're good people. They got a farm out there in Abilene. Thank you, specialist. Thank you very much, sir. He doesn't like that. Unusual, wasn't it, for Karen to want to be a helicopter pilot? I guess that's my fault. I took her to the fair when she was 11. 12. There was a helicopter there. Small one. The fellow, the pilot, was selling right. I bought Karen a ticket. It was a short ride. When she came down, well, I don't think she ever came down, actually. She's joined the Army. She wants to fly helicopters. Real stubborn about it, too. That's our Karen, you know, stubborn. So is Anne Marie here. <laughs> when parents have to outlive their kids, it's just not right. Major Teagarden, uh, her commanding officer, brought this photo back for Anne Marie. I spoke to the Major. Uh, everybody thought the world of your daughter. So did Specialist Ilario. It would sure help if I could see her letter. Letter? From Ilario? Oh, I'll check my notes. Must be my mistake. This is her husband here? No, that's Karen's older brother, Billy. Her husband's up in Michigan. Karen raised Anne Marie on her own. Oh. But Karen was a real good mom. Never asked for help unless she really oh. did. You can't imagine how hard it was for her to go off and leave that little girl. And it was important to Karen to do her duty. You've been sitting out here 20 minutes since I spotted you. How much longer before that? 15. Do you think the kids are going to understand why their daddy is sitting out here around the corner in a Chevy instead of playing with them in the front yard or at Fort Hood like you told me you were? Are you back? I'm in transit. This is tough. It'll be a long time to figure out how to be an army wife. It wasn't easy, but I did it. You know, I miss my life, man. And so are we. You don't have to figure it all out now. You just oh. have to admit that you can't. You have to want to be here with us. That's all. That's all. Now go away. If you're not going to stand up with the kids to see you. It's the Walden file, sir. One or two discrepancies. If she didn't deserve the medal, she doesn't get it. No, it's not Captain Walden, sir. It's some of the details of the stories that I'm getting from her crew. Ilario, there's something real funny about his story. We're not giving the medal to Ilario. We're giving it to Walden. Discrepancies specifically relate to use of an M16 rifle. Come on, that. <sighs> you agree that this report should be as detailed and accurate as possible. Which means exactly what, Colonel? Which means exactly what I said, sir. There's been a decision not to release any of these findings until every case has been thoroughly reviewed. Well, how long do you imagine that will be, sir? Do you want to know how many grieving parents I had to deal with during Vietnam? This is not Vietnam. Now, Lieutenant Boyla's tank was hit by a uranium-depleted shell. You're the only country in the world that uses that. The only person that knows the truth is not allowed to say it because these investigators are, are, are dragging their backside. Someone has got to be accountable for this. Is that him? He wants to be accountable? He wants to be in trouble for it? First you imply that I'm not interested in an accurate report on Captain Walden. Now you're suggesting that there must be some cover-up going on about our bother. So how do you want me to respond? I'm sorry, sir. Oh, I should hope by God you would be. My ass on the line right there beside yours. And I know about the drinking. Clean it up. Get yourself in a program. I'll be looking for that report. I don't... I don't know. I feel like there were subtleties given there. You were in Panama. Yes, sir. You were also in Desert Storm? Roger that, sir. Wanted to be a medic? Wanted to hump a nurse once. Does that count, sir? <laughs> so, talk to me about um, 25 February. He asked me to go with Walden, said she might need some guns. So I said, you know, okay, why not? And uh, Captain was a big hero. She died tragically in the desert, and Major T. Garden wants her to get the Medal of Honor, so she's gonna get it. When did the M16 ammo run out? Black Hawk crew said that they heard M16 fire during the rescue. When did it run out? I wouldn't know anything about that, sir. As, as I recall, and uh, I'm not really sure, but the M16 ammo ran out first thing in the morning. But you're not really sure. So you were there, weren't you? That's affirmative, sir. But I was on saw. Altamire would know, sir. Altamire? They all kind of get nervous, don't they? Well, you knew this wasn't Panama. You knew that men were going to die. So you wanted to get the hell out of there. Who, who told you that, sir? A tea party? Alario? You tell me. You don't want to know what happened out there, sir. Yes, I do. You just want me to sign off on the story so you can finish your job and the lady can get her medal. What happened? Are you refusing to tell me, soldier? Colonel, you know what to do if you get a hang fire when you pull the trigger and the round doesn't go off? You wait with your weapon pointed in a safe direction, right? Because sometimes the primer burns slow. You open your weapon and take the round out, it blows up in your face. Leave this round in the chamber, Colonel. I work at the Pentagon, Sergeant. So I'll admit, I'm a little slow on the uptake. Otherwise, I'd say that you just threatened me. What? Did you just threaten me, soldier? Because if you did, let me respond to you. I'm... I'm an officer, and therefore, by proclamation, a gentleman. But don't abuse that, son. 
Don't get in my crosshairs, because I'll have no compunction whatsoever about getting up to my neck in your ass. Do you understand me? She was afraid, Colonel. That's the bottom line on you, Captain Walden. She was fucking coward, sir. What? Get me around so I can fire! What? Fire! So it was your idea to use a fuel cell. Yeah, you know, the adrenaline was pumping, sure. You can't expect me to remember everything. Oh, so what we were seeing in these flashbacks wasn't the truth. It was just their version. So what happened during the night? Walden and Ilario. They wouldn't shut up about being rescued. SOP is for search and rescue to begin, Luke Guinness. Oh, Christ. Captain, are you crying? It's gonna be okay, okay. It's happening differently in his mind. I'm okay. She was here. So the rest of the night went without incident? Well, after the firefight, we argued mainly. Hilaria was freaked out by the dark. Walden wanted to surrender at first light. She was a wreck. Kept asking about the ammo, worrying we didn't have enough. So what happened during the evacuation? This is concerning. So they throw the green one to see where they're going to land. Well, then why did you lie to the investigators about how she performed? They didn't want the truth. They'd already put together their own bullshit version of the story. I just told them what they wanted to hear. So nobody from your Huey crew fired an M16 any time during the rescue? Firm, sir. You sure about that? That's affirmative, sir. What does that mean, during the rescue? How can they all... Hello? Hi. Uh, How's it going? Outstanding. I was calling. I want to... What 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 kind of what size t-shirts the kids wear? I want to get the kids some t-shirts. You know their sizes as well as I do. Are you okay? I got a pint of uh, scotch here and I'll take a bag. I don't want to drink any of it. Can you tell me why you need it? She's so calming. They've both taken to sleeping in our bed since you left. It's like sleeping between two tornadoes. Don Boiler called. Jesus. Nat, talk to me. I can't. Bullshit. Talk to me. Oh Christ. Oh my gosh. Talk to me. Way, way off the record. Ranger's honor. How long you been back? Six months. Now they got me running this inquiry on this girl. She'll be the first woman to get the Medal of Honor. I just want to get something clear, you know, this time. Just want somebody to be a hero. I want to get something right. You you talk to Boylaw's parents. They, they heard from a few of his friends. Oh, Jesus. They told Boylaw's parents that he died from enemy fire. I told them. I carried the message, went to the funeral, stood there, looked his father in the eye, and told him his son died brave under fire. He did die under fire still. So. I did it. And the army gave me a medal for bravery and valor. And they buried me in medals. They were under attack. Look, you need to sleep. You call me anytime, anything you want to say about anything. I'm going to leave you alone for a while. Ilario, are you saying that you can't find him, or are you saying that uh, he's absent without leave? Roger. Thank you. Karen. Do we have one more Karen. person to talk to? Quality. The heavier the pressure, the calmer she got. You know, she put up with a lot of shit to become an officer. She could never let her guard down, show any sign of weakness. She could handle it. By trying to explain to the White House there should be a further investigation. Hilario has disappeared. Walter Meyer is missing. Ooh. The Walden's crew chief. Paperwork's missing. The computer. You can't wait, Nat. Everybody wants it. Senators, congressmen. One little shining piece of something for people to believe in. Oh. Walden this is so... Submit your report today. I'm sorry, sir. This is so... I put my name on an incomplete report. Complicated. I could give you a direct order to submit your report. Yes, you could. Put element back on the Walden file. You could have had one hell of a career. I'm gonna finish this report. He's firing him? Mm -hmm. Need you to help me find somebody. Yeah, name's Altemeyer, Stephen Altemeyer. He was the crew chief on the medevac chopper that was piloted by Karen Walden. One's supposed to get the Medal of Honor. The very one. Okay. He's usually very tidy about his people. Yeah, usually, but not this time. I had him in a VA hospital. They transferred him. Now no one can find him. I'm out of the loop. Somebody important. Hey, look, you want to help me or not? Hey, who called who here? Is this based on a true story? Just tell me why I'm doing it. When you go after stories, you want them to be right, yes? Yeah. So do I. So I help you find this Altemeyer, and in return... There's a tape of all communications between our tanks that might not bother. Where do I reach you when I find this Altemeyer? That's the arm. The motel. Eat something. You look awful. Why is he staying in the motel? Alario just left? Oh, 
little joint. I'm secretly hoping she's not really dead. Like, that, that's what this story is going to be about, but I know that's not true. I just keep thinking that in the back of my mind to make myself feel better. Found Altamar. Got any complaints? Excuse me? Rashes, fatigue, diarrhea. I drink too much. Does that count? Hell, yeah, we all drink too much. Here he is. Gentleman here to see you. You want to shave? Abdominal cancer. He's never awake very long with all the pain. I'll leave you two then. Abdominal cancer? I wonder where he, when he they found that out. you about Captain Karen Walden. They want to give her the Medal of Honor. And I know that you were there in Al Kufan with her. I was hit. But you were still able to get radio. Radio. I was afraid. She, she was afraid. The captain was afraid? Not the captain. Who then? Was it radio or was it Lario afraid? Me. Didn't tell. You didn't tell what, son? The major. Who's the major? Monfries. The boxer. You and Monfries didn't tell the major. Only me. You and Monfries, what, Stephen? Please, what is it? Jesus. Oh, Jesus, the fire. Tell me what you see. Tell me about the fire, Stephen. You and Monfries didn't tell the major what? Is it napalm fire? Please. Stephen. Oh, this is painful. Please. He's up in his meds, self-medication. I need to talk to him. Give him a break, man. He's feeling no pain now. Oh, this is complicated. What happened for real? Get off my car, sir. Are you threatening me? I think you got something to tell me, Sergeant. You're off this inquiry, so what are you doing here, Sterling? Karen Walden sent me. I just left Altamire. What happened out there that was so bad that it would have Altamire laying up in a hospital praying to die? It's got Ilario on the run. That's right, he went AWOL. Now you can tell them, or you can tell me. What happened out there? Nothing happened. It was a war. Did they leave her there alive? Was she not really dead? And then they napalms? I'm gonna find out the truth, I guarantee you that. You think I'm bluffing? Maybe we don't drink and drive. Tell me about the fire. When I got to Boxing Pro, I was gonna call myself Johnny Night Train Monfries. Who's my other bottle? You ever kill anyone at close range with a small arm, sir? It's messy. Oh my gosh. We're not talking one of your great big tank guns here. My gosh. I know what you did. Guys under your command. How to feel? Very bad, son. Very bad. I've been a good soldier. A good soldier. Johnny Night Train Monfries. Oh no. What's happening? Now get out. Let me help you. It's too late. It's never too late. Things get fucked up in war. We both know that. You can't do this. Wrong. I can't do anything else. Yes, you can. We can help each other. I don't want to lose another good soldier. <sighs> this is very bad. What happened out there? He did something very bad? Don't do this, Monfries. I still go out there sometimes. I guess you told me about this place so I'd know where to find you. The MPs at Fort Stewart found your stash in your locker. Pretty uh, genius place to keep it, huh? What stash? Where'd you hide the needle track? Oh, that's why he's so skinny. Monfries is dead. Altemeyer is dying. All right, we are. We're going down! We're going down! We're going down! What happened next? What happened next isn't important. It's what happened that night. Humphreys wanted to make a run for it. You know, at dawn, we're dead. They'll have reinforcements. Escape and evasion, Captain. Maybe we slip by him in the dark. I told you. Righty can't be moved. That long, any movement might kill him. Righty will never make it. I say we go. Great, the Captain's crying. It doesn't mean shit. Alario? I wouldn't risk your life. I won't risk his. Say we make for the chopper now. And I say... I heard enough of that shit. And we don't even need your permission. I am in command here. Well, maybe not anymore. Oh, boy. You're not taking away my weapon. I can make a white flag, all right? There's no way you're taking away my weapon, cunt. Mutiny. An offense punishable by death. Jesus, Monfries! Shut up! She's trying to get us killed! Come on, Alario shithead! Do you want to die? <sighs> Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. 
Give me your weapon! Oh, Christ, Captain, I thought you were firing at me! They're wounded, man. Let me see. You're with them. You gotta let me look at it. Cap, we gotta get you out of here. We stay with Brady. And then... Then what? This is very emotional. There will be a reckoning. Count on it. Oh my gosh. There's a rescue! She said that. And he knew that she would report him when they get home. I'm coming to you. No! I'm coming to you. Come back for me! With a stretcher and more guns! It's in order! No! Oh my gosh. No! She has a daughter! Did he just not process fast enough, Hilario? Monfrey said she would have uh, court-martialed us. Not you? She was she was probably killed by uh, small arms before the napalm ever hit. Either way, she never she never could have survived that stomach wound. You think that matters? No. I couldn't bear to send this. I didn't even want to touch it. Can you get it to her parents for me, please? <laughs> oh. Uh, Annette, this is Tony Gardner of the Washington Post. Mr. Gardner? Colonel. And it seems that he has a few questions that he'd like to ask us. I insist that we be allowed to schedule the release of all information to the public regarding casualties. Oh. We'll be going with a story based on a tape that I've acquired of all radio communications that night. Ugh. Oh, everything about this hurts. First right, turn to, turn to the right! Liberty 6, this is Sabre 6. We got enemy tanks in our flank. They're firing at us! Loader! Say again, you just lit up a friendly! Roger that! We, what? You just lit up a friendly, goddammit! Cougar 6 was one of your own Abrams, Colonel Sterling, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. <sighs> Stop all tanks and turn on your light. Go to something. Snap out of it. Find me a target. Metallic, come on! Target! Lights on or off? Off. Fire. All the way. Early before status now. Situation under control. Was that a standard response to enemy infiltration of the lines? At the critical moment, in spite of terrible losses, Colonel Sterling didn't hesitate to act. Saved the lives of God knows how many of our men. It was a good thing that he sits around the lots. Did you know, Mr. Gardner, that for the first time a woman is being considered for the Medal of Honor? How's that going, Matt? In order to honor a soldier like Karen Walden, we have to tell the truth, General, about what happened over there. The whole hard... Oh, gosh. ...truth. And until we do that, we dishonor her. And every soldier who died gave their life for their country. My full report, General. A sacrifice ourselves for the lives of our comrades. Each one of us is mistaken. Oh, sweetie. It's only in death the power of this bond is finally tested. And who among us really knows how he might respond when that moment comes? Do you think hearing that tape and almost hearing himself be accountable? Let me just say that. That will allow him some closure? He was a good soldier. He was like a brother to me. And that night, uh, 25 February, there were enemy tanks in our lines. We thought, I, I thought, that uh, Tom's tank was an enemy tank. And um, I gave the order to fire. God help me. I, um, yeah, I killed him. As for the funeral, the lies the army told. And the lies that I told. I can only beg for your forgiveness. As far as that night, um, But it's a burden you're going to have to put down sometime. Thank you, sir. <laughs> the big play.
push. Looks like it's gonna really happen, and I'm afraid. Not of being hurt or killed. Well, kind of, but not much. <laughs> what I'm really afraid of is that I might let my people down. These people depend on me. I just can't fail them. Ooh. <sighs> If you get this letter, it means I'm dead. I only hope that I've made you proud that I did my job. I didn't let down my country, my fellow soldiers. I never stop telling Anne Marie how much I love her. He's going home. I really liked that movie. I mean, I liked it, but it was so sad. Why'd she have to have a daughter? Denzel Washington is fantastic in everything. I'm convinced of it. I think that was a good one for Veterans Day slash Remembrance Day because it showed the struggles of a veteran who has to come home and the struggles they deal with. And it also, we could remember the ones who gave their life. I really like investigative dramas. And so that had like the investigation part of it was really interesting and how they played that out with the different versions and stories coming together until we finally got the truth. You know, the will to live versus hoping you do what's right versus not leaving a man behind and then to live with that ah and then in Denzel's case I love when um Boylar's dad said you have to let that burden go sometime and I think he was able to and I think he was able to walk into his house I wanted him to say to his wife I'm home like I like you know I, I wanted him to say that but in my head he did because I think he was I think it coming out allowed him to let that burden I mean, he'll never fully let it go, but to maybe enough to connect with his family and wife again. You know, there's wars going on as we speak and sometimes it just feels super helpless, like we can't do anything, but one way is to serve and another is to honor and remember. I like movies like this that help me realize that our freedom should not be taken for granted and that we ask so much of are men and women in service and their families. I'm just thankful to them and their bravery. Okay, thank you so much for watching along with me. I'll see you next time.